um, going back to the course we're teaching, we have a lot of emphasis on Aristotle. So Jeff, you've mentioned Aristotle as your favorite philosopher many times. What do you think Aristotle, and especially his notion of phronesis or practical wisdom in contrast with homo economicus and rational choice theory, what do you think Aristotle, this 2,500 year old philosopher has to offer the, mo the modern moral economy? Well, I, I think uh, first it, it, is the, uh, it, it is the merger of Athens and Jerusalem, as, as is uh, said, uh, which constitutes uh, the core of our Western moral wisdom. Uh, Athens didn't get it right by itself. Uh, and uh, I think the uh, merger of uh, Greek philosophy, eudaimonistic philosophy, uh, and uh, the teachings uh, of uh, uh, the Old and the New Testaments uh, do a lot better when combined. Uh, Aristotle, to my mind, uh, made two piercingly important uh, points uh, in uh, the Nicomachean Ethics and the companion volume of the politics. Uh, one is that uh, the, the purpose of our lives and of society is good lives uh, and uh, eudaimonia. Uh, so the purpose is decent lives. That may sound trite or straightforward, but the idea is not implemented properly till today. But the idea should be uh, thriving lives. And uh, the Greek concept of eudaimonia is uh, the crucial concept. The second idea is that good lives come from the cultivation of virtue. Uh, in Greek thought, there were four uh, critical virtues, which became the cardinal virtues as part of uh, the uh, seven main virtues of the church. Uh, and they are, uh, of course, uh, wisdom, or what the Greeks called phronesis, courage, temperance, and justice. Uh, and uh, what I like about Aristotle is he says, these are not natural gifts, they are natural potentials. Uh, they are the potentiation, they're not the actual, and they need to be achieved. Uh, they need to be cultivated. Uh, and Aristotle had a theory of the psyche, which has a lot of resonance with uh, modern psychology and neuroscience, which says that we are divided souls. Uh, in Aristotle's mind, we are divided between a vegetative, an animal, and a rational uh, part of our psyches. But what he meant was that we're motivated by instinctive approaches, uh, by uh, irrational approaches, as well as by rationality, and that a good life comes from cultivating the uh, rational, uh, that means self-reflective and analyzed response to our lives. So what I like about Aristotle is that he understood uh, the battle of human motivations. Uh, he understood that people do bad things uh, as well as good things. He didn't uh, believe that it came from original sin in the Garden of Eden. He thought that it came from the makeup of our psyches as motivated by multiple and contrasting forces. But he advocated the cultivation of the rational, reflective, conscious approach to living a good life. And he had specific advice, which was the Greek advice of uh, uh, Medans Agan, uh, moderation in all things. Uh, so he argued that you achieve virtues by avoiding uh, the excesses of deficiency and, and excess or the extremes of deficiency and excess. So find a moderate path. He's very practical. Uh, he thought wealth was good, but you don't need too much of it. But he was no fan of poverty. Uh, I think that that was a good point. Uh, he uh, believed in uh, practical pleasure, but he said, don't let it get go overboard. Temperance, moderation in all things. And I think that this was very wise. You know, the, the, the knock 
Uh, and then he believed uh, that the life of the polis, the political system, was uh, dependent on uh, virtuous citizens and that a role of the state was to cultivate the virtues of the citizenry. So he saw ethics and politics as deeply intertwined, of course, as his teacher Plato did as well in the Republic and in the laws. So this is all very, very wise and got us off in a good direction in Western philosophy. But of course, the knock on Aristotle was he didn't think too much of slaves and women. Uh, so he believed in natural slaves and he believed that women were subordinate and uh, it reflected the realities of the polis. He talked about uh, the, barber, the Greeks versus the barbarians. Uh, there's a limitation there uh, that I think uh, the uh, Judeo-Christian ethics of universalism are crucial to uh, augment or to overcome. Uh, unfortunately, Aristotle's discussions about natural slavery were picked up uh, by the Spanish Sepulveda in his debates in 1550 and picked up by Southern white supremacist racists uh, in uh, America in the 17th and 18th centuries. So it didn't have uh, merely an incidental effect. It had a lasting effect, uh, the doctrine of natural slavery. It's a bad one. But on the whole, I regard Aristotle as just one of the most amazing thinkers of human history and uh, find it uh, unbelievably lush and inspiring to open the pages of the politics or the Nicomachean ethics or De Anima on uh, the psyche. Uh, everything he touched, he invented a new field. So he invented the field of ethics. He invented the field of political science. He invented the field of biology. He invented the field of psychology. Not bad. Uh, so uh, in this sense, I find it uh, absolutely thrilling um, and uh, very rich for our own challenges and speculations, not just going back to read some old dead guy, but actually really inspiring to do so.